Jesus uh, <coughs> experienced another kind of suffering and he expressed it through this particular verse. I read the story in Reader's Digest long time ago. <coughs> in one of the apartments, they found a foul smell coming from one of the apartments. And they knocked at the door, there was no response. So they called the police and the police came and they broke open the door and went inside. As they entered, there was a terrible smell coming from the bedroom and they saw a dog and a little girl <coughs> coming towards them. So the police went inside and found three bodies, father and mother, they were of middle age, both were scientists it seems, earning good salary and there was uh, a little baby lying next to them. And they found out <coughs> through autopsy that these two persons, the father and mother, they died taking poison. They committed suicide. And they found the little baby died because of dehydration. Okay. The baby cried, cried and then finally died. Now they found in the same place in the house the dog and a little grown up girl alive. Then they asked him, asked the little girl, what did you have? What did you eat? She said, I didn't eat anything. I didn't have anything to eat. Then what did you have? No, I just drank some water. When I, whenever I found thirsty. Then they asked her, where did you get the water? Because she was a small child, she was unable to open the tap also. <coughs> then the little girl showed them the place where she got the water. That was the commode, just the commode. Why did you drink that water? And she said, the dog went and drank from the commode, so I also took the water and drank. Now this shows the severity of dehydration. Now Jesus experienced that suffering too. All that he had for drinking is what he had on yesterday evening, in the Last Supper, the wine or probably water. After that, he didn't drink water. As he was hanging on the cross, he openly said, I thirst, I thirst. That shows that Jesus is thirst for the unreached soul. This Good Friday is good for the unreached souls. There are so many souls that are not reached out. There are so many souls that do not even heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now Jesus is thirst at the one level it shows that he had a real thirst, physical thirst. And that clearly affirms that, wa that he was in our human body. <coughs> There was one particular church in the first century to third century that said Jesus did not come in the human body because this human body is evil. As we hear here in our nation, in India, this body is Maya. Okay? And they said this body is evil. You do all kinds of evil things in this body and our flesh is weak, 
so jesus wouldn't have come in this body and they believed in strongly believed in that and when people asked them no oh, we hear that he came and people touched him and he ate food no 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 he appeared to to be eating but he never ate anything he appeared to have a body but he never had a body but they got caught when people asked him see the scripture is very clear isaiah chapter 53 that he bore all our suffering because of his stripe we are healed we receive peace now if jesus didn't have body he wouldn't have suffered people of beaten him but he wouldn't have experienced pain then that becomes whole view that jesus died he suffered for our sin is all a real bluff total lie then they got caught then the church rejected them and they were known as gnostics gnostics and the church insisted no jesus came in real body now if you read the uh, first chapter the first verse of the letter of st john he says certain things you wonder why he was telling this in first john chapter 1 <coughs> this is what he says that which from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen in our eyes which we looked upon have and have touched with our hands concerning the word of god see you could have simply said just we are talking about jesus christ we are going to tell about jesus the son of god but instead of simply saying we are talking about jesus christ we are going to tell you about jesus he said that which have seen with our eyes which we looked upon and have touched with our hands because even during the time of st john this gnostics the church that believed in gnosticism started flourishing and john was very upset so he said boldly unless someone says that jesus came in body they don't have holy spirit these people pretended that they had the holy spirit they blabbered something and said we are speaking in tongues and said no jesus didn't come in body real body not in the physical body now this particular word i thirst clearly says that jesus came in human body he experienced all that we experience in our life know that it really a word of consolation because <clears throat> this word affirms that whatever you experience in this world whether temptations or the struggles hatredness and people deserting you all these has been experienced by jesus christ he was in a real human form so that assures that jesus will understand all our trials and temptations all that we suffer in this world and because he understands he is able to understand whatever we undergo in this world he is able to help us he is going he is able to help us now <clears throat> we also know that this is as another kind of uh, uh, interpretation that is jesus has the thirst for unreached soul this gives us a motivation to reach out to other people and bring people into the church now here <clears throat> i would like to give you a little clarification uh, with regard to what jesus drank because when we had gone through this uh, order of worship <clears throat> there was a question what did he drink <clears throat> some said vinegar and some said sour wine 
So what exactly did he drink? <clears throat> now actually in King James Version, it says vinegar and some other translations also. But uh, ESV, what we have in the Bible, in, in, the, in our church, English Standard Version, it says sour wine. So I did some little research on that and found out <coughs> that, <coughs> sorry, it's not vinegar. It is sour wine. In other translation, in Greek, uh, uh, Matthew, in Greek version, it says, wine mixed with gall, G-A-L-L. -L. So that the wine will become a sour wine, a bitter wine. Okay. <coughs> now, what is this drink? They say in history, this is a compliment from the women's fellowship, it seems. Uh, <coughs> they make it and give it to the people who are going to be hanged on the cross. So that they won't feel the pain. It will numb their nerves. So they won't experience pain. <coughs> now, if you read carefully, sorry. <coughs> In Mark chapter 15 and in John 19, we come to know that initially they gave this drink to Jesus and he refused to take it. Okay, he refused to take it. Why he refused? Because he wanted to endure the pain. He didn't want to numb his nerves. He wanted to experience his pain. He came down to suffer for our sins. He wanted to suffer and give us salvation. So he didn't take that uh, sour wine or the bitter wine. He refused to take it. Even though they gave it to him. But then John says, finally he took it and then died. So he knew that he's going to die immediately. So finally, because the thirst was so much, when he was about to die, he tasted it a little bit and then died. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, all that I want to share with you is that just realize how much our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffered for our salvation. Our salvation is free, but it is not a cheap salvation. It's a costly salvation. Not for us, for God, for Jesus. Because he suffered for you and me so that we could have God's salvation. Now, let's keep a moment of silence and thank God for experiencing the suffering due to dehydration so that he could experience the pain and suffering and give us his salvation. Let us also realize that this word tells us that Good Friday is good for the unreached souls and Jesus has the thirst for souls also. Loving God, thank you for coming down on this earth in a physical body and experiencing, experienced all the pain and suffering that we have to endure because of our own sins, but you endured it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we also thank you for encouraging us to reach out to the unreached souls. Yes, you have the thirst for the unreached souls too. Help us to realize it and help us to reach out to other people and bring people into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.